So uh, during the debate, you can call it even a debate. Anyway, during the, the debate, uh, Charlottesville came up. I think uh, Biden threw it out there. One of his, uh, one of the, uh, one of the more intelligible things that he said. Anyway, that he threw it out there. Charlottesville, something, fine people on both sides or something. And Trump, of course, denied it. And uh, and then I comment something on uh, Twitter, and then. The world descended on me. I got like, you know, a bunch of people uh, unfollowed me and everything. And uh, no, I'm wrong. It's not what he said. He didn't mean it. He he condemned the Nazis. He condemned the white supremacists. He did all that. <clears throat> so um, I figured, okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll go find the transcript, and I read it. You know, there's always the possibility I'm wrong. That over time I've forgotten. I did do shows at the time about this. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I thought, all right, now that I've read the transcript and I've gone over it, I might as well do a show on it and uh, get you guys up to speed on it. Now, it is going to be interesting because my guess is that nobody will come on the show, nobody will actually show up who <clears throat> isn't already convinced that, that, that Trump horribly misspoke or didn't misspeak, uh, spoke what he wanted to speak, but but uh, uh, basically uh, um, said things that could easily be interpreted as supporting uh, the bad guys in Charlottesville. But, uh, you know, so so they're not really interested in the truth. And this is the key. The, 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 the Trump supporters generally not interested in the truth, not interested in actually reading of it in a, in a contextualizing, actually looking at the context, what was actually said, when it was said, what order was it said in, and all of that. Um, they're not interested in any of that. So uh, this is really, I think, in the end of the day for you guys. So if you get in debates and discussions and uh, arguments about this, you'll have the intellectual ammunition. I'll also put it up on my website as my Charlottesville video, short video, and, and hopefully some people who are confused about the issue or innocent about the issue will uh, watch it and, um, and learn something from it, hopefully. Um, all right, so uh, w w w that's what we're going to do. Then the, I, I told you, there was a, uh, or I said yesterday, there's a good story in the Wall Street Journal uh, about how, in, uh, potentially, how the whole DEI thing started and why companies took it so seriously or what gave them kind of the... the um, legitimization to take it seriously and to actually implement it and so we'll talk about that it was it was a uh, it was a uh, uh, friday i think thursday or friday on the wall street journal all right but let's start with charlottesville um and and let me just remind you of what happened that weekend so friday i think it was the 11th uh and uh friday the 11th of what is it august um yeah, I don't have a date. Anyway, um, it, it was uh, it was Friday, the eleventh, and um, the it was Friday night, and you can find videos of this online. Uh, there was a, a a march on the location of uh, a statue for Robert E. Lee. And of course, the, the, this is um, uh, the the city council. I guess had decided to um, take away the sculpture, to dismantle the sculpture, uh, and uh, and this is partially this is partially organized as a protest against that. This is Ian says 2017. I think it was August 2017. And um, uh, the this particular weekend. Uh, there was a there was a, a demonstration organized and a permit was received and a demonstration organized and the permit that was received was by a, an organization that called itself Unite the Right and Unite the Right it, it wouldn't take you more than five minutes to discover yeah August eleventh twenty seventeen it wouldn't take you more than five minutes to discover that Unite the Right was an amalgamation of groups that all had one thing in common, and that is they were all one form or another of kind of white supremacy. Uh, they were, a neo, some of them were neo-Nazis, some of them were just plain old uh, white supremacists, some of them were confederalists who believed in the Confederacy was right, and, and uh, uh, but they were all one form or another of alt-right uh, 
uh, white supremacy, neo-Nazis. This is uh, this is who was there, right? And they are the ones who got the permit. They are the ones who advertised this uh, demonstration. They put up flyers. There were flyers online. There were flyers in Charlottesville uh, for this uh, demonstration. So the first, so um, on Friday night, they marched with torches uh, in in two rows. They marched uh, to the sculpture. And it was very clear. You can, again, find the videos now, and you can hear them say uh, they were chanting, blood and soil, and the Jews should not replace us. The Jews will not replace us. And not ambiguous. This is, this is it. They were the group marching. That was what's being chanted. That was what was being chanted. And uh, they, they marched the statue. They did whatever they did there. And that was the Friday night. There was no violence. There was no altercation. But there was this very visible, prominent, open display of uh, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, anti-Semites uh, declaring uh, Jews uh, are not among us. Now, as far as I know, and I've, I've, tried, I, I, and I've talked to people from Charlottesville, they were the only group there. There was nobody else there. Now, even if there had been, even if there was another group there, imagine you are just an innocent person who thinks, yeah, they shouldn't take down the statue of Robert E. Lee. And, and, and first thing is, you see a poster for this, and you see Robert Spencer is the guy speaking, and you see the names of the people, and maybe you go research because you don't want to attend a demonstration. Uh, uh, that you're not familiar with, and you notice they're neo-Nazis and, uh, and white supremacists. What do you do? What does a decent person do? Well, a decent person at the very least stays home. Stays home. But let's say you didn't do the research. You didn't do the research. And you show up there, and you see these people marching with torches, and they're yelling, Jews will not replace us blood and soil. What do you do then if you're a decent person who just doesn't want the sculpture up? Now, we can talk about why you would want not to, not to eliminate, not to take down Robert E. Lee's sculpture, but, but let's assume, what do you do then? You go home. If you stay, if you stay with a bunch of people yelling, Jews will not replace us, blood and soil, you are one of them. You are condoning them, you are sanctioning them, you are supporting them. It is their demonstrations, their license, their advertising, they're the ones speaking out. But they weren't anybody from Charlottesville. The locals were not there on Friday night. Now, that night and Saturday morning, Trump was urged to make a statement because some of these people these old right people, uh, were claiming that they were part of the Trump coalition, that they were mega, that they were part of his. So uh, people were urging Trump to make a statement uh, condemning them. He hesitated, waited, waited, waited. And then at some point on Saturday, now let's, let's get a Saturday. Okay, so he's hesitating. On Saturday... It's just the formal point of the demonstration. Again, the racists all show up. The white supremacists and the neo-Nazis show up. Uh, they're carrying uh, baseball bats and other uh, things because they're anticipating a run-in with the left. And, um, and then, uh, you know, the, 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 they're all there. Now, at this point, it's hard to tell were there other people there as well, hard to tell. But again, this is a demonstration of neo-Nazis. This is a demonstration of the alt-right. This is a demonstration they got the permit for. This is their gig. Any decent human being doesn't go. Doesn't go. Locals, not locals, doesn't matter. They don't go. Now, the left shows up, and indeed, some on the left are Antifa. 
clad in their black thing. They're also carrying baseball bats and all kinds of other mechanisms. And uh, a big fight breaks up. And they start fighting with each other. The police, uh, you know, are, are, are stuck, right? It's, it's a very difficult situation where people are beating each other with batons. What do you do? I mean, there were police casualties this day, which, of course, nobody ever mentions. A police helicopter went down as part of all this mayhem that was being caused by the alt-right. They, it was their demonstration. They were there. They were responsible. They were the ones who were demonstrating, blocking the roads, doing They got a permit, but a permit for basically a neo-Nazi event. Anyway, as part of this, of course, there's a famous guy who drives his car from the, from the right, drives his car, runs over this woman, she, he kills her. And then Trump comes up with a statement condemning, uh, uh, what was it, bigotry and, uh, 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 and, uh, and racism on both sides. Uh, not very satisfying, very weak. Everybody condemns it as very weak, as it was. It was not a particular satisfying. He does not mention the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists. He just generalizes and then says something about both sides. And indeed, by this point, both sides were attacking each other and both sides were violent. And it's not clear who started, who swung the bat first. But clearly... The old white people showed up with weapons, they, you know, with, with, with bats and, and clubs and so on. So, uh, you know, they were in for a fight. They were there for a fight. There was no question about that. And again, it's their demonstration. Uh, so he makes the statement Saturday. It's pretty meaningless. And this is, you know, there's a lot of uproar about this uh, over the next couple of days. And Monday, he's giving a press conference um, on Monday, this is Monday, Friday to Monday, right? Now it's Monday. He's giving a press conference about an infrastructure bill, right? In, in New York City, he's in New York City. And the reporters start going after him. So the reporters start asking him about this. Now, over the weekend, he had had a CEO council of a manufacturing, a CEO manufacturing council. Over the weekend, a number of the CEOs in this council told Trump that his response to what happened in Charlottesville was weak and, uh, and, and inappropriate. And as a consequence, and, and many of them resigned. Indeed, the council was they later dissolved because so many of the people resigned. Uh, uh, his uh, treasury secretary, not treasury secretary, his uh, chief economic advisor, uh, Cohen, something Cohen from uh, 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 Goldman Sachs guy, uh, resigned that weekend. So come Monday, people have a lot of questions, right? Why is CEO leaving? Da da da. Uh, Trump comes up with all kind of lame excuse reasons that have nothing to do with the reality of what's going on. But okay, that's just politics, right? And then a reporter yells at him, "Why did you wait so long to denounce the neo-Nazis?" Right? And Trump says, "I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure." I'm reading from the transcript. I wanted to make sure. Unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct. Not make a quick statement. Okay, so here he is admitting that he waited because he wanted to see who these people were. Now, note, note, five minutes it would have taken you to figure out who these people were. Five minutes. On Friday night, just by the very fact that they're chanting, Jews will now replace us, you know who these people are. You don't have to wait until Saturday afternoon to make a statement. So he says, the statement I made on Saturday, the first statement was a fine statement. But, but you don't make statements that direct unless you know the facts. And it takes a little while to get the facts. And still don't know, uh, you still don't know the facts, he tells the reporters. Yeah, right. And it is very, very important process to me. It is very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. If you go back on my statement... In fact, I bought it, I bought it, whatever the hell that all means. Anyway, he's, he's arguing that he needed time to get the facts right. So that's important because the facts are key here. And the facts are permit, unite the right. Uh, Friday night, all unite the right people. 
Saturday, Unite the Right rally. It's their rally. Maybe there are other people who joined it, maybe not. The facts, who knows what the facts really are with regard to this, certainly not Trump. As I said, on remember this Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible term this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. Which one? Who are you referring to? Are you referring to the Unite the Right? Are you referring to the alt-left that shows up on Saturday? By this point, it's not clear who you're referring to. And notice, and this is the key. Look, I just want to make something clear before we go on. I am not saying that Trump is neo-Nazi. He's not. I'm not saying Trump is a white supremacist. I don't think he is. I'm saying Trump is playing both sides because he doesn't want to offend the white supremacist too much. He wants to, you know, so he's playing both sides. He's being ambiguous. He's being ambiguous on purpose. He does not want to unequivocally uh, condemn. He wants to condemn, but also not condemn at the same time. He wants the contradictions. He wants the ambiguity. He thrives on that ambiguity. And it's that ambiguity that allows the supporters to say, no, 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 he doesn't support them. And it allows the alt-right, the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists to say, yeah, yeah, wink, wink, he's really part of us. It's exactly what Trump wants. Anyway, the exchange with the reporters goes on and the CEO of Walmart is brought up and, uh, and everything else. Um, you know, and, and uh, again, um, he's asked, why didn't you make a, a statement earlier? Why didn't you make a statement Saturday morning or Friday night? And he says again, there was no way, no way of making a correct, st a correct statement that early. Really? Jews will now replace us? It doesn't get much more correct than that. You, you, you know exactly where that comes from. You know exactly what it is. You can condemn it. It's okay. You can condemn it. No, you got to wait until the old left appears. She can make some ambiguous statement that's morally equivocating. Um, I, I, I had to see the facts. Unlike a lot of reporters, unlike a lot of reporters, he likes to repeat himself. It's really interesting to read these uh, actual transcripts rather than listen to them. Um, right? I, I mean, I, he says, I didn't know David Duke was there. I wanted to see the facts. Who cares about David Duke? Jews will not replace us. That's enough. And, and the other people there, any one of his advisors could have told him who they were. Again, none of them were in disguise. None of them hid it. It wasn't like a sneak attack, a sneak demonstration. It wasn't like it wasn't advertised. It wasn't like it didn't list who the speakers were that day. It wasn't like you couldn't search any one of those speakers and, and know exactly what they stood for, as many of us did. No, he needed time. He needed to get the facts. He needed to get more information. What information? What facts? What the hell is he talking about? Anyway, he goes on and, and he says the drivers are the cause of disgrace. Again, doesn't talk about his ideology. Uh, and then, and then uh, um, you know, all kinds of other stuff. Let's see. And then again, he's asked, as far as, uh, and then he's asked, uh, you know, the, the reporters at this point are yelling. It's hard to tell what they're asking. So they're, they're just yelling. And he's saying, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Fake news. That was a horrible day. You know, whatever the reporters are yelling, he's saying that. And then he says, I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you had. You had a group on one side that was bad. And you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wanted to say that. But I'll say it right now. You had a group. You had a group on, one, on the other side that came charging in without a permit. And they were very, very, very violent. Now, it's true. There were bad guys on both sides. But the fact that you get a permit whitewashes the fact that you're a neo-Nazi. The fact that you had a permit whitewashes the fact. You can't condemn them yet. Still, no condemnation. Then he's asked, do you think what you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? And Trump says, those people, all those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups. But not all those people were neo-Nazis. Believe me. That's right. Some of them were just plain white supremacists. Not all those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Who were they marching with Unite the Right if they weren't? Who are they? Who are these people? Those people, so he says, so a reporter says, well, white nationalists. 
because that's a, another group that was there, right? Trump says, those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue of Robert E. Lee. So excuse me. And you take a look at some of the groups and you see that you know that if you're an honest reporter, which is in many cases you're not, many of those people were there to protect the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Now, again, we can talk about whether you should protect the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee, given that Robert E. Lee was the general responsible fighting to preserve slavery. I mean, you would think you would want to take that statue down. You know, you, you know, why would you have any respect? Statue is respect. This is government spending. This is a government facility, government park. Why would you have any respect? Why would you want to defend a sculpture honoring Honoring, that's what sculptures do. They honor somebody who not just held slaves. A lot of people held slaves, and some of them were actually great people, but actually defended the institution of slavery and was responsible for one side of a war that resulted in 600,000 deaths, but the one side that is the evil side, the bad side, protecting the slavery. Anyway, so Trump goes on. You take a look the night before, and this is key. You take a look the night before. You, so now you cannot say he wasn't aware of the night before. He says, you take a look at the night before. They were there to protest taking down the statue of Robert E. Lee. The night before? The night before was the chanting of Jews will not replace us. That's who was there. The night before was blood and soil. The night before was the... That's what the night before was. That's the video of the night before. That's the facts of the night before. So it's not that he's ignorant of what's going on. It says, you take a look at the night before. That's Friday. They were there to protest taking down the statue of Robert E. Lee. Yes, they were. But they were also neo-Nazis, white nationalists, white supremacists. Still haven't condemned the people who were there the night before. I'm just going in order, so we will get to his condemnation. He ultimately does say something about it, right? So we keep going, and uh, a reporter says, Mr. President, are you putting what you're called alt left and white supremacist on the same moral plane? And he says, I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane, <laughs> but he is. I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and a group on the other side. And they came at each other with clubs. And it was vicious and horrible. And it was a horrible thing to watch. Now he's at Saturday. Right? He was on Friday before. But there is another side. There's a group on this side. You can call them the left. You've just called them the left. They came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want. But that's the way it was. That's the way it is. So all he wants to do is attack the left. Again, he's playing to his base. It's always the left's fault. They are the guys who are responsible. Right. Yeah, you can see Scott, who claimed to be, I'm not a Trump supporter. I don't, I don't argue for Trump, I, you know, but it's a two systems thing. And this is who it is, so I'm going to vote for him because I can't vote for Biden. But he's defending Trump. And he's defending Trump by, by gaslighting, by, you know, by stating the irrelevant, by going in the irrelevant direction. Uh, by, by, you know, I'm reading a transcript, the exact words. Um, God, I mean, these people are really disgusting because they reject objectivity. They reject facts. They're uninterested in facts and objectivity. They're uninterested in reality. Pure emotionalism, pure, well, get the left, I guess. So but Trump is shifting all the blame for the violence to the left. Again, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, who cares? Then the reporter says, you said uh, there was hatred and violence on both sides. And Trump says, I do think there is blame. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. And and 
if you reported it accurately, you would say, and the reporter says, the neo-Nazis started this thing. They showed up in Charlottesville. Trump says, excuse me, they didn't put themselves down as neo-Nazis. <laughs> no, it, you'd actually have to have three minutes of research to discover that they're neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and white nationalists. And you had some very bad people in that group. So you acknowledge that. But you also had people, there were very fine people on both sides. But you also had people, there were very fine people on both sides. Which very fine people? Which very fine people? On Friday night? No. All there was were these people on Saturday. The very fine people, very fine people, not just fine people, very fine people. The very fine people join a demonstration sponsored by neo-Nazis. The very fine people join a demonstration sponsored by white supremacists and white nationalists. Do very fine people do that? So yes, he acknowledges there's some very bad people, but then they're very fine people. But who are these very fine people? Where are they? Why? Why would they be there? Why would they be side by side, shoulder to shoulder with neo-Nazis? Anybody here going to join one of those? Any one of you? You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and renaming a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Again, you, there were demonstrations on other weekends. Why join the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, the white nationalists? Why be in that group? This is the big tent that some of you want. You're not very fine people if you join a big tent with ni white nationalists and white supremacists. There are no very fine people in the tent with the neo-Nazis. Those people are not very fine people. Did somebody wander in there by accident? Maybe on Saturday, not on Friday. Not on Friday. There was nobody there. And they were marching. And they were stating exactly what they wanted. Jews will not replace us. Now, you want to side with them? Go for it. Live your life. You want to excuse them? Why? What is the motivation of anybody? What is the motivation of anybody to excuse this kind of behavior? So here's, uh, so here's his condemnation. You know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. All right? But those who march shoulder by shoulder, not. And it took him about half an hour into this to, to actually condemn them. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists. Who? Who? And why would you defend them for marching with them? Because they're marching with you. Because they're your people. Because you know they vote for you. Because you know you don't want to offend them. And you don't want them to turn, turn away from you. And here, just in case you're not, you, 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 he, you might think he's confusing Saturday and Friday. He says, there were people in that rally. And I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly. The taking down of the st statue of Robert E. Lee. Go look at the videos. Look at the videos of the night before Friday. And you find me, the people, very quietly protesting, side by side with people yelling, Jews will now replace us in blood and soil. You find me those very, very fine people uh, uh, demonstrating quietly. Wait. That's all there was there. And then he says... The following day, it looked like they had rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. And, and Friday, they didn't have neo-Nazis, white nationalists? Again, the chants were not white nationalists and neo-Nazi and, and, and neo chants? But Saturday, there were bad people, but not on Friday? This guy's, you know, he, he will 
twist the truth any way he can in order to avoid, avoid unequivocally condemning what happened on Friday night and what happened on Saturday, condemning the neo-Nazis, condemning the white nationalists and white supremacists unequivocally, which he didn't do in his statement on Saturday, and he continues to fail to do. He continues to justify and be ambiguous. On purpose, he's ambiguous. He's speaking out of both sides of his mouth on purpose. He knows exactly what he's doing. He says, the following day, it looked like you had a, some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, white nationalists, whatever you want to call it. But you had a lot of people in that group who were there innocently protest, very legally protest. No, the legal protest was the one for the Unite the Right. And Unite the Right was not just all right-wing groups. There was a list of who, who were the Unite the Right members, white nationalists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis. A lot of people in that group that were there innocently protest, very legally protest, because, you know, I don't know if you know, but they had a permit. Yeah, they did have a permit. So we know exactly who got the permit. We know exactly who requested a permit. We know exactly what the poster said. Show the posters. Who wants to show the posters? I've got the poster in front of me. Uh, the poster says, March on Charlottesville, Virginia, unite the right. Lots of symbolism that is basically kind of SS, kind of a, a Confederate flag, uh, statues, and the speakers. Richard Spencer, well-known, Mike Ennock, Jason Kessler. You can, all these guys, you can look them up and you can find exactly what they are. I, I've got it right here. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, want to see the poster? I'll show you the poster. Uh, da, 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 dum. Not that. Huh. Why don't... Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, oh, it's an Evernote. That's right. R wrong wrong uh, thing. All right. There it is. Uh, this is the poster. Those very fine people showed up um, in support of this demonstration because of this, this, you know, innocent poster. You can't tell from this imagery. You can't tell what it's about. These are all very fine people. Very fine people. There you go. That's the poster. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody can look up the video. I'm not going to play the video. I don't have the video with me right now. Uh, but, all right, there it is. There's the poster. It looks like a Third Reich poster. I'm sure, I'm sure just the right of center people in Charlottesville who don't like the taking down of sculptures saw this poster and said, yeah, I'm going to go join that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go there. Very fine people. Very fine people. This was not a big tent rally for support of monuments. This was a white nationalist, neo-Nazi march. You wanted, if you were part of that big tent that uh, opposed uh, uh, taking down monuments, if you were opposed to that, then there were other opportunities for you to express your concern. If you joined this, you were joining a neo-Nazi demonstration. Right? I mean, is there any question about this? So uh, let's see if there's anything else. I think that's all the relevant stuff. From I mean, you can all find the transcript. Um, you can see the video. I, I just find the transcript easier because I can read it and emphasize what I want to emphasize. But you can find the video. It was uh, on uh, the fifteenth. Uh, the fifteenth. So I think that was a Monday in New York City um, at a press conference uh, announcing his infrastructure thing and then the reporters just want to ask him about Charlottesville and there's a reason they want to just ask him about Charlottesville because yes the evil reporters because 
it had happened on the weekend, and he had not made a, the kind of statement that you would expect the president of the United States of America to make after something like that happened. And as a consequence, the chief economic advisor resigns, Jewish by, by you know, uh, happens to be Jewish, and um, a number of CEOs leave his, uh, his uh, council. So the people marching in Charlottesville on the Friday were guys with torturous chances, blood and, chanting blood and soil, Jews will now have places. Uh, he is ambiguous on purpose. He's denouncing Nazis on one side of his mouth and calling them very fine people on the, uh, on the other side of his mouth. And again, that doesn't make him a Nazi, but it makes him somebody that is courting that vote and doesn't want to turn them off too badly. He condemns white nationalists, but sees no problem with the march on the statue on the Friday night, never mentions the chanting that happened, even though he said he waited and he looked into the facts. The video was circulating. I, I, yeah, I can't remember if it was a live stream, but within, I mean, that evening you could see the video. Certainly by Saturday morning, you could see the video of them and what they were chanting. So there's no hoax here. There's no, uh, you know, mainstream media hoax about what Donald Trump said after Charlottesville. You know, maybe they overstated it. Maybe they overplayed it. But wouldn't you expect them to do that? Imagine if any other politician, any other politician, left or right, did this, said these things. He would be lamblasted, not just in the press, but everywhere he would be condemned. But it's Donald Trump. So the media, the fact that the media condemns him makes the right, people like Scott, but people from the alt-right and people from the right general, the whole MAGA movement, makes them support him. Because the media must be wrong. The media is evil. The media is just out to get him. And therefore, there it is. Trump must be okay. He's the good guy. We can't have anything negative said about Trump. And look, I mean, if you go to rallies of MAGA, put aside the rallies Trump does, but if you go to Michael Flynn rallies and other rallies of Make America Great Again people, there is a lot of this kind of white nationalism. There is a lot of this Christian nationalism. There is a lot of just Insanity, conspiracy theory, nuttiness. So you can say, look, I'm, you know, I don't like it, but I'm going to support Trump because I hate the left so much. But really, MAGA is disgusting. Something has to be done. We need to really deal with the MAGA crowd. Uh, their policies are awful. Their attitude is awful. You know, and it's really horrible that this country has produced this result. You can say that, but I don't see anybody saying that. Nobody's saying that. I see people who say, oh, I have to vote for Trump and, and, and will not accept anything bad said about Trump or MAGA or you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene or any of the nuts, the absolute crazy, nutty, insane people that Trump has attracted and the Trump that, that are in the Trump universe. I mean, Michael Flynn being the nuttiest one of all. Just go, you can find Michael Flynn quotes from the last. They, they say nothing. Nothing. I mean, what Scott really wants is the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists and objectivists and libertarians and conservatives and, and make America great again people all to be in one big nice trend. He wants to march shoulder to shoulder with the neo-Nazis and the white supremacist. And I'm using Scott here as an example for millions of people out there. He's just, he, I mean, not millions and because, because he considers himself or gives lip service to objectivism. But, but you, know, you know, so here he's, he's just an example of the kind of insanity that will kill whatever rational movement can actually be created in this country. And by doing this, by doing this, 
people like Scott are sanctioning the neo-Nazis, white supremacists, Michael Flynn, crazy Christian nationalists that are out there. They're sanctioning, they're making them possible, they're supporting them. And at the end of the day, when and if, hopefully never, they take over, we'll know who was responsible for it. All those people who didn't stand up, all those people who didn't condemn, all those people who were afraid or irrational enough not to see what was coming and not to object to what the right is doing and what the right, some people on the right stand for, not to object to who Donald Trump is and what he stands for. It'd be on them, among many others. All right. That's all I have for that one. I don't know if there are any questions on this topic before we move to attacking the left. <laughs> As I do on this show. <laughs> Equal opportunity. <laughs> God. Uh, um, let's see. Let's quickly look. Jennifer says, Lee was horrible. Not only did he fight to preserve a slave state, but supposedly he didn't even agree with slavery but fought because of loyalty to his birth state of Virginia. Despicable. Absolutely. He is, he was, and is a, um, you know, a, 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 a follower of duty above all. And, uh, you know, was not a supporter of slavery, and yet fought for slavery, for the maintenance of slavery, slavery, so his neighbors could have slaves. That is despicable. This is not a man to be admired. And now, look, the statues should all be preserved in the museums. People should know who these people were. People should know also, by the way, that the st southern states erected these monuments after the war, basically in order to poke the anti-slavery crowd, the blacks in their community, in the eye. Why would Virginia, after the Civil War, Erect a statue for Robert E. Lee. Basically to tell their blacks, yeah, it's too bad we lost. But we, we, we remember. We remember who you are. We remember what, what your status is. It's, it's one of the most disgusting things ever. Imagine. Imagine. Uh, Nazi Germany, uh, imagine Germany, after defeated by the Allies, erecting statues to Hitler or Goering, or any or one of his generals, even to Rommel, who at the end of his career was anti-Hitler. They didn't, and they wouldn't. But that's exactly what the South did. They erected not just statues of Robert E. Lee, but all the big Confederate generals and, you know, even Confederate politicians, right? Why? Why would they do that? If not because they maintained a certain pride in the slave state that they were responsible for. And if that isn't shocking, and if that isn't reason enough to, I mean, we would all agree. I mean, I love the fact that one of the first things that happened when the wall fell down and the Soviet Union got broken up is the statues of Lenin and Stalin came down. And that's a good thing. And when the statues of Lenin and Stalin went back up, that was a really bad, worrying sign about the direction that, you know, Russia was going in. And here is the South doing that, putting up the statues of Lenin and Stalin, and we should preserve them. No, put them in a museum where we can remember how awful the South was, not just in the Civil War, but in the post-war era where they you know, uh, 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 lionized these generals. Everybody has a right to protest the statues. You can protest. You're not a good person if you do. But to protest side by side with the neo-Nazis, to protest side by side with white nationalists and white supremacists, that makes you, I mean, I can imagine people innocently protesting 
the pulling down of the statues. But once you're doing it side by side with Nazis, there's no innocence there. You're, you're, you're a bad person. You're a bad, bad person. But that's, you know, they were just marching side by side. They didn't actually say they were pro the Nazis. They didn't say they supported the Confederacy. They didn't say they were white nationalists. They just marched side by side with them. So, you know, all of you should watch. Uh, Ankar Gatti gave a great talk about sanctioning the sanctioners, about moral sanction, what moral sanction means, and what it means to, to identify moral sanction and condemn moral sanction. You know, the protesters at the universities, they didn't rape and pillage and murder on October 7th. Why are we getting so upset? They didn't do anything. They're just sanctioning evil people, but you can't, you can't be offended by people sanctioning. <sighs> yep. It, it's... The, the I, I, you know, I coined the, the Trump mindlessness syndrome. It's back. And if Trump gets to become president, we're going to have four more years of, of just mindlessness, just people making every excuse possible for this moron, every excuse possible for anything he does and anything he says, no matter how ugly, no matter how offensive. But he's one of us. He's, he's on the right, whatever the hell that means. He's not one of us. He's our enemy. He's one of many enemies we have. But TMS, Trump mindlessness syndrome, big out there, big out there. It, 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 it's It's... It, no, it's, it, it's, it's not, you know, they, they, they are driven by hate and fear so much that they are blinded to everything else. Fear and hate of the left. I don't think Uncle's talk is posted yet, but I highly recommend it when it gets posted. I thought it was one of his best talks he's ever given. It was, it was clear, it was, uh, you know, it was really well structured, really, and, and it, was, it was kind of, it, it, there were elements of humor in it. I mean, it, I, I thought there, there were elements of humor in it. And it was, it was really, really well done. And it showed just how evil sanction is, and, the, and, and not just the sanctioners of evil, but the sanctioners of sanctioners of evil, and the sanctioners of sanctioners of sanctioners of evil. And this is why we condemn the universities. We condemn the universities because they're sanctioning uh, the sanctioners of evil, right? Why did we, why did we, why were they, why were the presidents of the university? They didn't do anything. They didn't protest. They didn't commit the crimes. We were against them because they sanctioned the protesters were sanctioning the real evil, right? So they were sanctioners of the sanctioners of evil. And if you can't see that, and if you're willing to sanction evil, then you're part of the problem. You are part of the evil. Anybody marching side by side with neo-Nazis and white supremacists for the best cause in the world is not a good person. No nice people do that. Not a good person. Anybody marching with white supremacists, neo-Nazis, not a good person. I mean, unless there's a gun pointed at their back and they have to do it. There was nobody protesting that was not affiliated with those groups on Friday night. And if they were protesting, then they were shoulder to shoulder with the neo-Nazis because it was their protest. You just can't get around this. You just can't get around that if you are there in the same space with neo-Nazis and white supremacists holding up signs or whatever you're doing supporting them, you are part of them. You are not a good person. And on Friday, there was nobody there. Just ask the people in Charlottesville. They weren't there. And look at the video. They weren't there.